Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Hang from Wizards Den, and today I'm going to talk about sleeves and storage for your sorcery cards. I know there are many people starting to play sorcery as their first TCG, and I wanted to show them what kind of products are available to protect and store their cards. Now, I can't give a comprehensive review of all the products out in the wild. I'm here to just show what products I ended up using and stick onto after playing other TCGs for over two decades. I'll be mainly talking about sleeves, but I will be taking time on talking about binders and stores too. So let's move to the game table. Okay, here I present you the sleeves I actually use. I use KMC products as KMC is a Japanese company and is relatively abundant and cheap. Its quality is great too, I have never experienced something bad about them. Sorcery uses standard size cards, which is the same size with MTG, Pokemon, and Flesh and Blood. There are three size variants of sleeves for the standard card size. There's a perfect size, normal size, and an oversize. This compares the size of these variants, and you can see that you are able to fit each of the smaller size variants in a larger sleeve. These small variants in size exist so people can double or sometimes triple sleeve their cards. In the old days, there were only normal sized sleeves and people only single sleeved cards. The problem with single sleeves is that though it protects most of the cards, one of the card's sides will be exposed due to the sleeve opening, and it'll be exposed to finger when you handle them. This is one of the reasons why the top side of the card might have more damage compared to the bottom side, compounded by other damage resulting from finger flicking. Also, dirt and liquid will come right in, and that is why double sleeving was invented. Double sleeving solves this exposed top side issue by using another sleeve that covers the top side. If you insert a sleeved card so that the sleeve opening is inserted in the opposite side of the outer sleeves open, you can make a card that's perfectly sealed. To fit another sleeved card, the sleeve needs to be smaller than normal, hence the perfect fit sleeves were invented. These smaller sleeves are made so that they fit perfectly to the cards allowing the cards to be inserted into normal sleeves. There are three different KMC perfect fit sleeves I'll be showing today. Two of them I will not recommend. The sleeves that I recommend is named Card Barrier Perfect Size. Use this one, it is great. This one that I do not recommend is named Card Barrier Perfect Hard. The difference is that the Perfect Hard has double the thickness of the Perfect Size and is more durable. However, that leads to having less wiggle room in the sleeves and you could damage the cards when sleeving them, if you do not treat the cards with care. Also, it tends to bend the cards. Let me show you the focus. They're like that. So, um, it's not great at all. This one that I, that I also do not recommend is called Side Imperfect. These are called side loaders and you can insert your card sideways. The reason why these were made was because when you double sleeve, air gets trapped and the card get all puffed up and you either let, let it degas by putting it inside the deck case and adding pressure to the sleeve cards. These side loaders allow degassing easier as the opening is on one side and that leaves more path for the air to escape. But that is the exact reason why not to use these, as that means liquid can seep in the cards from top to the sides. This effectively kills the advantage of double sleeving being resilient to water damage. The normal double sleeving is really robust against liquid damage that you can even dip this in water, but these side loaders, not great at all. Whatever brand you are using, never use these side loader inner sleeves. Now let's look at the normal size sleeves that I use. 
KMC Card Barrier 100 is basically a penny sleeve and I use it for putting random cards that will go for trading. Then this one is KMC Hard Clear, which I use to double sleeve collection cards. These have the thickness durable enough to actually play and have complete transparent backs. So these are great sleeves for double sleeving foil cards. Double sleeving prevents moisture, so it delays the foil curling and you would be able to see the full art back perfectly. Now I will show the sleeves that I use to actually play the cards and it is KMC Hyper Matte. There are seven color variants of this sleeve and I use three of them. Red, black, and clear matte. The great feature of this sleeve is that the back side has an emboss finish. Uh, and it is really nice shuffling the cards. Also, it is durable and I had no issues whatsoever up this point. Uh, I'll be using the red ones for the Alex cards, black for the spellbook. The clear mat will be used for avatars and rubble tokens as I do not have to shuffle it in my deck. Um, if, you, if you compare the clear mat with hard clear, you can see that it will be more opaque due to the surface finish of the back. Finally, the oversized sleeves. These sleeves are made larger than the normal sleeves, so like, like this, so you can triple sleeve the cards. These are not intended to protect the cards itself. Well, it does, but that's not what it's made for. These are typically called character sleeve guards and protects the normal size sleeves illustration on the back. For example, I use these cute Pokemon sleeves when I play Pokemon, but these are no longer sold and I don't want to wear them off as I would not be able to replace them when damaged. So I put these oversized sleeves to protect the sleeve itself, hence why it is called character sleeve guard. KMC produces these character sleeve guards super hard and this is the only product I use. There is also one with a matte finish but that sort of like uh, makes the image opaque like these ones so I use this one. Other sleeves I'll be using are these mini euro size sleeves which I will be using it for sleeving the core size tokens. I'll put the token inside and heat seal and cut the extra parts and I'll be sealing it like this. For top loaders I use these ones made from A-Class which is another Japanese brand. These are really transparent and I like the quality. I use it to store my sample cards uh, like this and cover it with a, a tape bag of this size. Uh, which is 80 by 120 millimeter, excluding the flap. For storing loose packs and box toppers, I use these cases. These are two different sizes. Um, this one is great for storing normal thickness booster packs, and these are better for storing packs that have around five cards in it. This is how it looks when I store a sorcery booster pack in one of these cases. Just as a warning, there are people who try to store packs inside top loaders, but don't do that. Even if it was a pack with a single card, what that is going to do is that it will apply pressure on the back side of the wrapper flaps and you will end up creating dents on the back side of the card. Always store loose packs in these kind of cases. I also store the case inside a tape bag um, of this size, 90 by 150 millimeter, excluding the flaps. For the binder, I use this Ultimate Guard Quad Row 24 Pocket Zip Folio. These are great quad row binders, perfect for storing playsets. It will allow the double sleeved cards fit in perfectly and all my other non-sorcery stuff are stored in these binders. Finally, I store my binders and cards in this dry box. As you know, I live in Japan and humidity is a huge issue, especially for foil cards. 
These have automatic humidity control using Peltier devices and controls the humidity level electronically. I store all my delicate cards inside these to keep it in the best condition. So that's it for today's episode. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for future episodes regarding sorcery. Thanks for watching and until next time, have a great game.